Welcome to Widow Too Soon. This is Michelle Bader Ebersole. I like to put the emphasis on that, you know, with my new last name. And I'm sitting here with my friend and co-host, Mark Massaro. How's it going, Mark? First of all, it's Mark Frederick Massaro. Oh, that's right. I forgot the middle name. Because I'm know, saying three names. Yeah, so you have to have I got to make names. my name cool, too. Actually, nice. I don't like my middle name. I never have. It's a weird middle name. It's weird. It's just not very common. Sorry if there's any guys named Frederick, but... I think because it's like <laughs> you have a common first name and then an uncommon middle name. My assumption is that my parents did the same thing that Lacey and I did with Luke. We named mm. Luke's middle name after um, Lacey's dad, who's named mm-hmm. Jeff. But we thought Luke Jeff sounded right. weird. So we did Luke yeah. Jeffrey. So my grandfather's name was Fred. Okay. I think I think Mark okay. Fred would have sounded weird. Boom figured it out so that was today's episode thank you for listening (laughs) (laughs) just kidding uh so it's going well how are you doing I am good it was Mother's Day yesterday Mm -hmm. so I had one of the best Mother's Day ever it was absolutely amazing it was definitely my first my best one was my third one being widowed and it was the best one because I have Joel I'm pretty sure that's why it was way better um it was a nice, beautiful day. It was like, it got to like 92, which is like unheard of in Washington. And we all, um, well, first of all, Joel made me breakfast in bed, which was awesome. Nice. And then we went to church and then we all went to this lake, the lake water. I'm not kidding. It was like 50 degrees because it comes from the mountains. It's freezing. So, uh, we all jumped in there. Haley swam for like 40 minutes because she hates heat. And so she like loved it. And me and Joel, Joel's like, we're going to jump in. We're going to swim all the way there. I'm like, okay. And then we get in he's like, Nope, I'm done. <laughs> retreat, like, retreat. Yes. <laughs> like that was the coldest water I've ever been in. But he is from Louisiana and Brazil and all these like warm places. So yeah, it was definitely really cold for him, but it was super fun. And we did paddle boarding and just that's my idea of a Mother's Day is like we took a picnic, which Joel took care of. And like we're out on the water all day. And then my nephew had a birthday, my niece, sorry, had a birthday party and we rushed back to go to that, which was really fun. And it's just a really, really good day. And my kids all made me things because I was like, you don't need to spend money. So Haley made like this um, collage with all these pictures of us. And then it says mom in the middle. And then uh, Peyton made a video, like just all these like cute little videos of him. He put it together and he's like, I am who I am because of you. And it was very sweet. And then oh, Hayden did cool. like, yeah, Hayden did like a little audio recording. He's like, so you can keep this. And it's all about, he loved me and how I'm strong, blah, blah, blah. So it was really special. And, um, and it's just, I think we talked about this before at some point, maybe on my mother's day episode, I talked about it. If you are remarried or dating again, it's important that you talk about with your, your partner, how you're going to handle these kind of holidays. Cause last year, Joel didn't really know. Cause it's our first time dating. And like, what do I do like for mother's day? And I told him, I really want it to be a big deal this year. I want him to like play that role that Luke used to play, you know? So it was really, really good and wonderful. And um, another, a few more things that have been great since we last recorded is that um, both of our oldest sons, um, Joel's oldest son and my oldest son are both home from college. And so that's been really fun having a really full house and, <laughs> nice. um, you know, like pretty much doubling going from like a few months ago, just me and two of my kids to now there's six of us. And, um, it's fun. Like Bentley, our dog loves it. Cause there's always someone home and I think he <laughs> totally loves that. And it's just been fun, like going out and exploring and doing things together. And, you know, and then for me personally, having all three of my kids home, I love that. And, uh, I love summertime. It's not quite summer, but like my kids have like, ah, uh, four weeks left, maybe something like that. My younger two anyways, good stuff happening. Oh, mother's day tea. I did a Mother's Day tea for widows and um, ended up being oh, a yeah. co- coffee place put on by my um, nonprofit. And so I had people donate products and things to give them t- time to pamper them and to bring them together because a lot of them had mentioned they never really met other widows. And so there was myself and another widow who's been a widow for a while. And then there were three new widows, like within the last couple of years, one of them was five months. It was like five months, a year and two years and just giving them the opportunity to share with each other. Like we just went around and I, I didn't have like a big formal presentation. I was just like, you know, what's been the biggest challenge as a widow. And like, if you'd love, if you'd like to share your story about your husband, we'd love to hear it. 
So there was a lot of tears, but it was so mm. healing for them to get to share what happened to their husband and then what's been the most challenging for them. Oh, and then I said, and what has helped you the most? And mm. so just getting to hear that from all of them, it was really powerful. And my friend um, that came, that's a brand new widow. She said, this is so amazing. She's like, I have best friends. Like we've been friends forever, but this feels different. Like you guys get it. Mm -hmm. And it was just such an amazing experience. Um, and then people had donated more things. So I did raffles. Um, my counselor donated three counseling sessions. So one of them, wow. one, yeah, I was like, this is the biggest, like, let me get one like, of those. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you want this one. And so whoever I called first got to choose and they chose that one and gave away books and just a bunch of stuff. And That's they cool. all said how much they loved it. And, you know, I almost had canceled it because there weren't very many people coming, but then I was like, oh, I'm just going to do this. And I'm so glad I did because it just felt so good to give back and to just remember what it's like to be new in this and to feel supported. And there was nothing like that when I was a new widow, like nothing to plug into like that. And so I told them I want to do it more regularly. And anyways, not about cool. me, that's a little bit what's going on no, with good. me. So what's going on with you? Oh, well, let's see. So I had four things about the stuff you said first of all when you said it was mother's day mm -hmm. i wanted to say it's gonna be may because it's in may and we Is had a, a special re yes. i don't know that one <laughs> it's uh what was the band that justin timberlake was in in sync in sync okay so they had that song it's gonna be me oh okay but well, it sounds I didn't like may so it. every may you didn't see my post. It said, uh, roses are red, violets are gray in a few days. And then it just showed a picture. Of oh, Justin yeah. Timberlake. I was like, I don't get this. It's I saw gonna somebody, be May. I did not get it at all. And I saw someone else, right? I don't get this. And I was like, I just don't get it. I'll ask him later. So now you're explaining it. I'm sure I wasn't I it was the funny. only one. I'm sorry. I laugh at stupid stuff. But anyways, that was, so somebody, uh, one of our listeners and, you know, friend said, um, the, you need to get this into a podcast episode somehow or something like that. So Got it. that was that was my special request. Oh, um, okay. the second thing is I tried so hard and I'm proud of myself that I didn't interrupt you good. two times to <laughs> sing School's Out for Summer That'd and Summer, Summer, Summertime. Summer, by Will summer, Smith. summertime. Um, yeah, there was that. And then uh, anyways, I don't remember what. The, oh, then the last thing I was going to say, is, this is, you know, not joking, but um it's kind of sad. Oh. So Mother's Day is one of the busiest days of the year at church. Yeah. Father's Day is one of the slowest days of the year. Really? Yeah. Because like, like mothers want to go to church. The whole family to church. It's a Mother's Day gift for everybody. Yeah. To go to church. And the fathers are like, for Father's Day, I don't want to go to church today. Interesting. I did not. I don't know, know that. if that's true because I was never like that, but I just assume that's what it is, you know? Uh. So anyways, um, thought those were my interesting facts um, and jokes that I wanted to add in there real quick. So anyways, um, you know, Mother's Day is difficult. Yeah. Um, it's obviously better than it's been in the past because I have somebody to talk to about it, you mm -hmm. know, but um, I had a few moments that were that were hard and just... Um, you know, just missing Lacey, you know, yeah. just really missing her. And um, she's just, she's such a great woman and she is, her soul is still very much alive. She is a great woman, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, you know, it's one of those things that it just kind of, I don't know. I don't really feel that way as much like on her birthday. Of course, there's this feeling of like, oh, it's her birthday yeah. you know, and that sucks. But like, there's just something about Mother's Day because, you know, she should have gotten so much recognition for what an amazing mother right. she was and she's not here to receive it. You know right. what I mean? And so, I don't know, there's just something about that. So, um, but um, it's, it's so funny, right? Like you can, you can totally have these two equal feelings at the same time yeah. and they don't cancel each other out. And it's, I don't know of anything else that's really relatable to that, but like, I can seriously miss Lacey so much and just have tears rolling down my face, but at the exact same time, be super thankful for Tina and so right. happy to be with her and appreciative of her being in my life and all these wonderful things. So, 
Um, so I had, you know, that was my mother's day, just kind of touching on that for the widowers that listen, I'm sorry if that was a tough day for you. And, and the mothers, of course, that like, don't have their husbands to celebrate them anymore, you know? And, and they, you know, you know what I mean? Cause it's like that on father's day, right. Is it's Mm -hmm. like, I mean, now you have Joel, of course, but you know, you remember from the past, like there was nobody to celebrate on father's day, you know? Um, and of course we celebrate, but you know what I mean? Right. Um, so anyways, uh, I am, and so here's something I have to say, so I don't feel uncomfortable talking about it. We have recorded an episode, a special mm. episode that we can't air yet um, due to some technical reasons. So forgive us if you hear us repeat anything <laughs> or if the timeline of things doesn't make sense. Um, but uh, so what I have been up to is, um, well, I went to Kentucky. On, nice. What day did we go? We went on Saturday. We met up with Tina. We went to the park for a bit, which was really cool. And it, it was kind of like kicking it old school because that was where we used to like meet up, you know? Nice. Uh, and then we went to this place called, uh, I always forget the name. I know she's like laughing at me right now. Uh, she's like screaming it. This is, <laughs> I know it. Oh my gosh. Uh, Malibu Jacks. And it's like, Aww, uh, that's a cool name. it's kind of like Dave and Buster's. Yeah. But like a little that's bit smaller, fun. you yeah. know, but it was, it was cool. It was really fun. Um, we did bowling, we played video games, we rode go-karts. Fun. Uh, there's like this full play area for the kids. So that was super cool. Um, and the big news is I have finished my real estate stuff. Yay. I am now studying hard and I'm taking my test in nine Ooh. days. All right. That's if awesome. I pass... I'm a licensed real estate agent. Oh, congratulations. So, thank you. I'm super excited. Really I worked awesome. my butt off to earn this. Yes. I got my high school diploma. I've been yep. just, I'm like 300 hours sitting at my desk. Um, That's a lot. To get this thing. So anyways, <laughs> um, awesome. I, I could talk about stuff all day long that I've been up to, but that's that's the flyover. Um, and then, of course, I, um, I carried on uh, Lacey's tradition of calling her aunt on mother's day um, oh, that was nice. always special to her because she was very much um you know like a she was the they always called her aunt jackie like mm-hmm. from roseanne because she was like the the aunt that was like always involved and stuff like oh. that um so you know i don't know it just became a tradition um for Lacey to call her on Mother's yeah. Day. So I, I continued that. So it was really nice to to chat with her for a bit. And of course I you know wish Lacey's mom a happy Mother's Day and um, you know, we chatted for a bit, but, uh, and I, I tried calling my mom. She didn't answer. So if anybody's like, you didn't call your own mother on Mother's Day. <laughs> so yeah. anyways, that's, what's been up with me. So what's, yeah. uh, yeah. Well, I want to say something else about Mother's Day. I, I forgot for a little bit and then I reached out to Luke's mom and she said, thank you. It's a really tough day because mm. Luke, there was no one like Luke to remember. And like she, he would always send her like the nicest texts and, like just, he was really good at gifts and also just remembering and saying kind words. And so she said, thank you. It's a really hard day. And it just reminded me. And I said, mm. I'm sure as a parent, it's one of the hardest days. Of course. Yeah. And just when you're like, just that different people grieve different relationships in different ways and different times. Whereas mother's day doesn't affect me that much as Luke's mother that will forever affect her yeah it just made me just remember to put myself in other people's shoes and just try to remember everybody on all the days that could be difficult so it was just a reminder and I told the kids you know grandma's having a hard day and they're like why I'm like well because her son is gone you know like they just didn't think yeah yeah. first so anyways um to all of those who have lost children uh I'm sorry I'm sure it was a very difficult day or if you reached out to your late spouse's parents and they were having a hard time, that's, that's difficult. But anyways, I just want to share that. No, that it's and important that's, that's to remember. Why is, absolutely. Yeah. Cause we're not the only ones, even though I remember in the beginning, there was just this feeling yeah. of like that. Uh, and of course I knew factually it wasn't, right. true, but it was right. so heavy for me it felt like I was alone in it and I was the only one that lost Lacey. And of course that's not true. I mean, you know, right. A lot of people lost Lacey, but particularly Lacey's parents and and brother and sister-in-law, you know, my sister-in-law. And, um, but you know, there was just this overwhelming feeling at first that just, it felt so heavy, 
um, that it was hard to remember. Oh yeah. Like I'm not the only, and I didn't want to like be selfish and Mm -hmm. seem like I was the only one, but I think that's, it just feels so intense, but you know, now I'm much better at remembering, um, you know, there's still, and they're always going to be in this forever difficult season. There's just constant memories and things that are always going to be difficult. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it sucks. It sucks losing somebody, you know, it just sucks all around and, you know, it's hard. It's really hard for all involved. Like my son now is starting to, like, he was crying the other day, like Aww. this is probably four days ago, five days ago. And I was like, what's the matter, buddy? And he like, wouldn't tell me. And he was just like, he looked like it was legit. Like, you know, it wasn't yeah. just like, like moby right. tears. I didn't get my way. It was like, he was hurting about something. And I'm like, what's the matter? And I figured somebody made fun of him at school or something like that. And he's like, I just miss mommy. Oh, I was like, I know, buddy, heart. I do too. I'm so sorry. You know, I give him a big hug and, um, you know, showed him some pictures and videos and, you know, I showed him a video of, um, not too long ago of mommy, like, pushing him on uh they went on this rope swing together mm. it was like somebody made it at the park they climbed up yeah. the big old tree and put a rope Aww. so um but you know and then uh I almost said Lacey Alexis has a lot of those moments too I almost yeah. said Lacey has a lot of those moments right. I still sometimes call Alexis Lacey mm. isn't that yeah. funny um yeah. so anyways but uh so yeah I think that's that's good to bring up you know yep well let's go ahead and get into the topic today The title today is called Widowed Then Versus Now. Mm. So we just want to talk today about where we were as baby widows, like in the first year and where we are today and some tools and some things that have helped us to get to where we are. So let's see, Mark, what about where were you? Like, bring us back to those, I don't know, first, let's go, let's go way back time machine first month right after Lacey Mm. dies. Let's talk about where you were then and then where you are now. Well, that was a very dark and weird season. Um, Because as you know, and anybody that's been listening for a while knows, we were going through the most miserable, horrible, like indescribable season of life. Um, as Lacey was nearing the end and it was insanely difficult on me, of course, on her too, but I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to speak from my perspective. Right. And, um, it, it was really, really difficult. And I mean, I remember praying in the shower, like, God, if you're going to take her, just take her, Mm -hmm. like, why does she have to suffer so much? And so there was this feeling shortly after she passed that was, um, I was happy for her. I was happy for her that she wasn't suffering anymore. And, um, it, for me, it it felt, I, I, I don't think anybody would understand this who wasn't going through something like that, but there was this feeling of like, oh my gosh, like I can leave the house again. Yep. And so there, and I'm just being totally vulnerable. I, I, I know some people might judge that or whatever. Of course, I wasn't happy um, that she died. I was miserable, but there was some sense of right. like relief that mm-hmm. some sense of normalcy was back in life. Right. Um, but it was a very uh, intense and scary reality checking season. Like the weight of it started setting in yeah. and the once the initial like i can leave the house again wore off after like i don't know a few days or a week maybe um the heaviness of what our reality was now was like really yeah. weighing in like oh my gosh like my wife is gone like i am i am raising these little kids by myself and that was a very dark and scary time. And I was looking for anything to help me feel better. Um, and, you know, I've mentioned before, I, I turned to pot and that didn't help and just different, different yeah. things that were just, um, gosh, it was so hard. I, it like, it, it's hard to even like want to turn my brain back to that right. place. 
because mm -hmm. it sucked so bad. It was yeah. like, I, I mean, I'll just get real. Like I didn't want to live anymore. I, if it wow. wasn't for my kids, I, I don't know. I don't think I would, I don't think I would have like hurt myself, but right. I didn't want to live anymore. I really mm -hmm. didn't. Um, I, I don't know how else to explain that. Like, I didn't want to kill myself, but like, I did not want to live anymore. Right. Yep. And, um, and that was, that was brutal. That was like a hard, it was just like, oh, whatever. I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I tried to, you know, and then, but I have these two kids that are like looking to me for like, mm -hmm. how are we supposed to respond to this? Yep. And so I'm sitting there preaching to them about, mommy's in heaven and mommy's at peace and mommy's not sick anymore. And, but even just saying those things, I don't know, you know, it's like, I'm getting all like emotional, just like, right. about it. so I'm going to take a break on that. Cause it was, it was a sucky season of life that yeah. I don't, I don't recognize who that person right. is. Right. And I put on a face for everybody around me, but inside I was just, you know, I mean, people knew I was broken, but I mean, I put on, right. I didn't show anybody what I felt when I was alone at night, you yeah. know, nobody got to see that and thank God, cause that would be embarrassing for me. Um, mm -hmm. but anyways, how about you taking it back to the first month? Yeah, that was a crazy time. So, um, the very, very beginning, just shock in the beginning. Cause we thought we had more time, but not shock, like a sudden death, but still, you know, he died of a blood clot suddenly. So um just really just feeling that and then just I feel like I was so weak like I could barely get out of bed I didn't want to mm. get out of bed um feeling overwhelmed with my kids emotions <clears throat> too one of my kids um really had a lot of behavior issues and that was difficult and um so that was on top of everything else and I remember those feelings you're talking about, not that I would ever hurt myself either, but I was like, I don't want to live like, and my mom would be like, you've got to live for your kids. And so I, I really feel for widows who don't have kids or kids at home mm. and they don't have that same, um, right in front of their face reason to keep going mm -hmm. and so like older widows or just widows that don't have kids or whatever, like that would be so difficult. It was a very, yeah, dark. I remember feeling like I was on a dark tunnel and like, there was no way out. Like I, I do understand that little bit of relief. And, you know, when I did the mother's tea this last weekend, that was a common theme with uh, almost all of the widows, like that there's a sense of relief um, because they were all sickness deaths, um, when somebody passes away, just that they're not in pain anymore and that you're not dealing with it anymore, dealing with all the pain of just the emotional pain that goes through that and the yeah, physical he pain. Hearing somebody you love, like screaming in pain, pain is like agony, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. So I just remember it. It's like kind of all mixed in my head. Like, I don't remember specifically every single day, but I just remember being overwhelmed. Like I knew I had to call his, um, you know, he worked for the post office and got disability. We had already been over everything. He's like, you're going to have, after I die, you're gonna have to call right away. So I remember that was the first call I made, um, over the weekend, like a couple days after he died. And that lady was so rude and she didn't even say, sorry for your loss. It was the first time I'd like said it out loud to someone I didn't know. Like I'm calling because my husband passed away and there was no like, Oh, we're sorry. Blah, blah, blah. It was just like, okay, so what's going to happen is we're going to need a refund of the check. We already paid you. And it was just like, what? And then just being overwhelmed with burial plans. And mm. I mean, we had an idea, like we knew that we wanted to have him cremated, but bury the, his ashes at like a gravesite. So we kind of already had an idea, um, but it was still overwhelming. I had to go pick out the place and pick up the urn and pick up, you know, just all the things that you're just like, I can't do all of this. I, I remember that I wasn't really eating. My mom had to remind me to eat. I would make the kids food, but I would not even be hungry mm. and just kind of in a like total shock, weird zone. Like, what is my life? what like where you just feel kind of out of it like mm -hmm. and that still happens to me once in a while I'll get this like wave of like whoa my husband died that's weird like am I in a dream like that's mm -hmm. so 
so weird and weirdest thing, totally off topic. But I had one of these dreams last night. I have them all the time that Joel like leaves and like I'm alone. And it's like this whole thing. And I, it's not like it's fear. Like I think he would ever like leave me. I think it's fear of death. I mm. think that's, he's like, why do you always have these dreams? And I was thinking about it today. I think it's because Luke died and I have this fear of being alone again. Um, anyways, let's just side note, but no, oh, yeah, that beginning time was like, so oh, awful. It is hard to like actually go back. And that's why a few weeks ago, I put a link to a podcast that I did. I think it was like seven or eight days. It was less than two weeks after Luke died. And just, I could barely listen to it. And Joel listened to it and said it was so hard for him to hear me like raw emotions, crying, like the, through the whole podcast and just to see where I was like, that was painful. Like I actually had it like documented <laughs> where mm-hmm. I was. And mm-hmm. I remember just crying and crying and going, I know we'll get through this, but I don't know how. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that's going to happen because I can't see it right now. Like it was just so painful. And then being around other people and like, yeah, that was hard. Like there were other couples the same. or yeah, yeah, any of that. I remember being at church and crying because I saw an old couple and I'm like, I'm not going to have that, you know, and just like yeah. all of the things were so, I feel like it's kind of like being trapped in like um what's that called trap sand sand trap you know quicksand quicksand that's it that stuff (laughs) (laughs) quicksand and it's just like you feel like you're kind of in quicksand you can't really get up and you're kind of you're just weighed down by the weight of deep grief and like and then all the decisions you can't just lay in bed you have kids and you've got burial plans and bills to pay and bills to pay and death certificates to order and the feeling of opening the death certificate like yeah oh, and changing was, everything oh into your name and yes. the health responsibilities and the things that were about to be done by your spouse that aren't being done now i'm just saying all the things i've heard this wasn't my exact situation yeah but there's but so just, many things you can't just curl up and be like you you have to keep living and yeah and having belief that it would get better, having trust in God that it would get better, but not seeing how. And that's yeah. why it was important to me that I, I called, I had seven widow friends. I called every one of them. Does it get better? Like, I just needed to know that. And mm. that's like, that's why that's my big thing. I love to tell people it's not going to feel like this forever. Now it has to do yeah. with if you take steps to get better, Right. But it does get better because that first little while, it feels like so overwhelming. And then if I would have like seen what's coming now, I would have never believed it. Like my entire mm-hmm. life is different. Like I have a new house, a new husband. I mean, it's just so different than mm-hmm. it used to be. Like my day to day is so different. And I remember it was my hospice nurse who said to me in a year, you're not going to recognize your life. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if it'd be that different. She was so right. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. How much it changed. And I just, um, I'm so thankful to be here versus then. So yeah. let's go, let's go back to you now. And let's say, let's tell the audience again, in case they don't know how far out you are from Lacey's death and where you are now with just everything. Um, I, well, we just, you know, I'm, I'm uh, almost three years. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, which is crazy. I know. Um, So it was August 13th, 2020. So, you know, it's like one year, eight months, nine months, somewhere in that, that range. Two years. Two years. Sorry. What did I say? You said one year, eight months. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I passed math, believe it or not. (laughs) You did? (laughs) Um, I know. Right. Hard to believe. Um, but yeah, so it's almost three years. So obviously there, so what time phrase do you want to jump to next? Like three to six months? Yeah, I guess we should do that. Okay. We don't have to like go all the way to now. Yeah. How about two months? No, just kidding. No. <laughs> Let's do every so, single month yeah. from now to three years. Five weeks. It's like when you have a baby. <laughs> oh yeah. Know, and you count. Sudden, there's, there, you know, there's six weeks and seven weeks. And I remember Lacey used to be like, uh, she's like 19 weeks. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know like let's just call it what it is now, you know? 72 and a half weeks yeah exactly <laughs> you know I'm like she's in the months now um but anyways so let's say three to six months so obviously there's there's not many tools to get through the first month you need to yeah. just go through it yeah um, that's kind of all there is to it yep. you just have to go through it uh, I'm a poet and I don't even know it 
Oh my goodness. So, uh-huh. um, Amazing. so three to six months. Well, during the three to six months, uh, I, I had a lot of, I started having a lot of mixed, you know, feelings like one thing on the positive side, like felt like it was okay to laugh again. Yeah. You know, um, I felt like it was okay to have fun again, to smile again. Um, but that's when a lot of weird other grief started setting in, like the reality of, um, nobody's ever going to love me like that ever again. You know, yeah. Lacey and I met when we were young. Yeah. Um, we had kids together, like nobody, like, I'm never going to find somebody that's going to fulfill that spot in my heart of feeling loved and, and, um, appreciated. And you know what I mean? I just, yep. so that was a hard reality that I was like, gosh, she was, you know, she was so special that like, I don't think I'll ever feel that kind of love again, but God, of course. Right. Um, but so, the, you know, I had a lot of conflicting feelings. I was starting to move forward. I was talking to um, a lot of widowed people in different groups and stuff like that and and meeting so many people that like understand and, mm-hmm. you know, having conversations with random people on Facebook that it was just like, oh, tell me what it was like, what you went through and then, yeah. you know, whatever and um, different things like that. And, you know, in the chats and we'd be commenting or whatever, you know. Um, reading people's posts that like, yeah. just felt like, you know, one of those posts where you're like, oh my gosh, I could have written Dang that it. whole yeah. thing word for word. Yeah. Um, but then also, you know, starting to see some sunshine again. Uh, mm. Occasionally, it was like the analogy you've given several times that like, okay, the storm clouds are at first, it's just storm clouds. That's it. You know, no, yeah. not a not a blue sky in sight. Well, now I was starting to see, you know, blue skies sifting past and or, you know, but rather storms, clouds, sifting past storm clouds, sifting past. And, um, so, you know, it was, it was a lot of mixed, mixed feeling, yeah. but there was still, there was still obviously a tremendous amount of pain, still a lot of me, um, trying to figure out who I was and looking at my life and not recognizing it. And, mm-hmm. uh, just a lot of things that were very difficult for me. I had a, a, you know, I have a great friend who was, um, helping me get through that season. She was homeschooling my kids, but I worked at the crack of dawn Mm -hmm. and it was like 50 miles away from my house. So I was dropping my kids off, um, at somebody's house. I had a key to their house and I was putting my kids in their house to go back to sleep. So every morning I would wake up at, you know, I think it was like three 30 at the time. And, And then I would get ready for work. And then I would go get my kids out of bed one at a time, load them in my car Mm get my stuff, go to my, go drive to my friend's house, go like with one sleeping kid in my arm, (laughs) unlock the door, go in, lay that kid down, go back out to my car, get the other kid, et cetera. And then there was always this feeling that I hated having to drive away from them every morning and just, you know, leave them sleeping in somebody else's house. And, um, not that there's anything wrong with that house, of course, but just that it was just, it was hard for me, you know, every day was hard for me and, um, you know, going to work and just, just this part of you that like the biggest thing that was settling in for me is at that time was probably uh, how, how pointless life felt. Yeah. That was probably one of the biggest things for me. Um, but so now that we can kind of cap off the end of these, with some tools like for me it was um talking to people yeah and prayer and talking to god very vulnerably and sharing my true feelings with him um yeah was was powerful for me and uh you know i had a huge picture of her up in my closet and i would just like go in my closet and just stare at it and i know it's kind of a weird thing but grief is weird but for me that somehow helped process because I was no longer looking at a sick Lacey. I was looking at my beautiful bride again. And Mm -hmm. um, there was something that was, that overcame me with gratitude and gratefulness for the time that I had with her. Yeah. And for just what a beautiful soul she had, um, has. And um, yeah, that was, that was helpful to me to know Like, I I felt like when I stared at that picture, this is what it was. I felt like when I stared at that picture and I would start to weep that I almost felt like Jesus was standing there with me, like whispering in my ear, she's with me. And Mm. 
it just brought me so much peace knowing that she's in the arms of our savior, you know, and Mm -hmm. that she isn't, um, you know, I felt like another thing that was pressed impressed upon my heart was no matter how much you would want her back, she wouldn't want to be back. She is in paradise. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and it was like, okay. And another thing was like, she's where you want to be. And so I was like, okay. And so that was just something I did a lot. I would just sit in my closet and just stare. And maybe yeah. that's why now, I don't know, for some reason I hang out in my closet. I have a walk-in closet. Maybe it's because <laughs> that's where all my cologne is. I don't know why, but I was just talking <laughs> with Tina about this. I'm like, I don't know why I'm so often, I go in my closet and I just like end up sitting in there talking on the phone with her for a long uh-huh. time. I don't know if I just got used to the closet bringing me peace, but anyways. Guys, I want to share something with you that I'm really, really excited about. I've mentioned it a few times, but I am now a grief recovery specialist. And what that means is I help people actually recover from grief. Like you don't have to stay where you're at. I take people through one-on-one and groups, and we really go through steps to identify first what's holding you back. Did you know grief is like having a bunch of rocks in your backpack? So we've got to unpack those, and I give you step-by-step ways to actually move forward. So if you want to learn more about this, there's a link in the show notes that you can book a call with me. I do one-on-ones. I do groups. I would love to speak with you about how this could work for you. Thanks. Um, so tell me about your three to six months. And then at the end of you sharing that, what were you starting to use as tools? Okay. Oh, three to six months. So May, so June, July, so August. Okay. September, October, November. Let me think if I can bring it on back. Well, that's when I went into my grief soup. So my grief counselor, explained that when you have grief, it's like the soup or the stew, everything you've ever grieved comes up. So I was facing old things, um, things I've never talked about on here, but I I feel fine now talking about it. I had a youth pastor who was super inappropriate to me when I was a teenager and all of that stuff started to come up. And I actually dealt with that with my counselor and actually confronted him. Uh, He came to the counseling office and I read him a a letter about how his actions had a domino effect on my entire life. Mm. And um, because it's a long story, but I was, I was the first of seven girls and the church, I went to the church and they did not listen to me and it could have prevented it from happening to other girls. And so I don't know why, but in this grief soup, like, I'm like, why is this? I was angry about it. I was really angry about this man who had impacted me in a negative way in my life. And so working through it with my counselor, we were able to have him come into the office, which is actually re- pretty brave of him to walk into this, knowing that I, um, I want to share something with him. I read him a letter and I said, what you did to me was not okay, but I forgive you. And he's bawling. He's like, I didn't expect you to forget me. Mm. And um, did he know why he was going in there? Do you think? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. He knew that he was coming in and he knew who was wanted to talk to him about the past. Mm. And he knew my counselor and, um, it was one of the most empowering things I ever did. Wow. Was, that's awesome. Yeah. And so I want to encourage you, if you have other things coming up in your life, you're like, why is this happening? Don't be afraid to confront them. Um, also a thing I've never shared publicly, but I feel okay. Like, I feel like it's time to be more authentic about some things. Um, I also went through this grief of like, okay, why did these ex-boyfriends before Luke, why did they break up with me? Because if they hadn't have broke up with me, I would be married to someone who's still alive. So I went through this whole mm-hmm. grief hearing and I actually uh, contacted a few of them and asking them, like, I need to know why you broke up with me. Like from like high school, I'm not kidding. Like <laughs> high school, call, yeah. It, and some of them got back to me, some of them did not. But it was just this weird thing that I went through that I was like, this is weird. Like, what is happening to me? Why do I care about this? But so just know you're normal. If you're like dealing with like breakups from high school and like all of these or anything things. that you might anything, think is weird, anything that's coming up, that's okay. That's because you're having grief soup. So confronting that youth pastor was so empowering and be, to be able to look at him and say, what you did is not okay, but I forgive you. And then I prayed for him and it was like so powerful. And mm, um, so that was awesome. one yeah, that was one thing during that time period. Um, 
it was still pretty dark, but I do remember it being, and I've talked about this in other episodes, like a month later and like starting to laugh again and starting to be like, oh, I'm starting to see a little bit of sunshine, taking my kids on trips and just trying to continue life. Um, my son's behavior was still not the greatest, but it was, it was getting better. I would say it was that time went on. We also started looking into moving. Um, mm. and it wasn't a brand new, they say, wait a year, blah, blah, blah. But I knew before Luke died that I was going to move because all of my family lived a little bit North and I wanted to live near them. And so I had already, I knew I was going to do this. And mm-hmm. so that wasn't a new thing, but I think it was in the six, first six months that we put the house on the market or started the process. Um, I really got to know a lot of widows through widow groups. That's in the time period when I met you it was about six ish months, I think. Um, so getting to know other people and relating to their stories really, um, it's about the time I wanted to start helping other people and, um, started doing like TikToks to help widows and started just uh, social media to help widows. I, um, was accepted into this. Um, so Lisa to who's a famous Christian author. She had this like writing school basically, and I, it was called a um, book proposal boot camp. And so you would work on a book proposal Anyways, it was like they chose a hundred out of 800 and I was one of them um, to write a book called Widow Goals, which I have not finished. Um, but I started working on that. That was really cool to be accepted into that program. It was the first time I made a big financial decision by myself because it cost a lot of money, but I decided to go for it. And it was just, I think it was still dark, but I started being like, okay, who am I now? I can make decisions on my own. Like I can be empowered to do things. I can learn how to fix things. And it started to go from, I would say probably in the three to six, probably closer to six months, it was better where I was like, okay, I'm okay. I can do this. I can do this. And started to That's just awesome. be like independent woman. Like I can do it. Like I don't. I don't. All the women <laughs> independent. Yeah. I don't know what it says yet. In the air. Yes. All the mother, the yeah. Sorry. I it's great. It's great. But it just, for me, that started to become the time where well, that might've been closer to the six to 12 months. I don't know where I started to come out of that fog. and like, this is my fight song, you know, take back my life song. I actually did like a whole <laughs> video. Like that was one of my songs and like, just started to be like, I got this. Like, I'm going to be okay. This isn't the life I chose. I don't like it, but I'm going to be okay. And just started to, then the thoughts started coming probably closer to six months, but like, well, maybe I do want to get married again someday. Like maybe I'm not going to be an old cat lady with like 10 cats and all by myself in my house. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe it's going to get better. Um, so what helped me is like learning how to do things for myself. Um, learning line dancing. I don't know if it was, it was around that time period, maybe closer to six months, like learning how to do things, um, deciding to take financial things into my own hands, um, doing the book proposal, like just taking my life back, I guess, because it had been consumed by Luke being sick for so long. And so there was that relief, not that I would ever want him gone. Don't hear me wrong, but it was that like, whoa, I can do whatever I want because my life is not consumed by sickness. And I would have done it forever. I would have taken care of him forever. But it was like, well, I don't have that choice. So now what am I going to do with my life? Because it had been years of pursuing like treatments and this and that. And then it was like, what? I can do whatever. I I remember the day of like, my life is a blank book. Like I can do whatever I want. Like, this is crazy. Like in a Mm -hmm. good way, like, whoa. I could figure out, you know, and at that time I didn't have a job. I did some things online here and there, um, but I didn't have to work right away. And so I was able to spend some time trying to figure out who am I Um, joining all of those widow groups helped. And then something, so I don't know if it's in the three to six or six to nine, something that you shared with me really helped me. You told me what you talking about work reminded me. You told me that you would like pretend, not pretend, but Jesus is on the, you know, in the front seat and you talk mm, to him mm. on the way to work or home. And I started doing that every time I was in the car by myself. And it was so powerful. In fact, I want to do that again. Like it was so powerful. And then I would take walks with Jesus. I leave my phone yeah, at home yeah. and then I go out in the field and just cry and just like cry my heart out. Here's how I'm feeling. I'm really sad. I'm really mm. upset about this. I, I guess that was further along. But it's all kind of mixed up all in this time period of trying to move forward, just spending that time. And I've tried to explain that to my kids, like 
you can share anything with God, like anything, Mm -hmm. you know? And so becoming closer to God than ever before, definitely during that time period, because I felt so desperate and alone. And then having those times at night, all the kids sleeping, I'm crying, I'm praying, I'm listening to songs and God would always meet me there and comfort me. And anyway, so, so I guess worship was a big thing, just turning on worship music. I also went to a grief retreat and I remember this lady saying that to me, have worship music on all of the time. Um, so I went to a grief retreat that helped me. I did grief counseling that helped me and my regular counseling. So I really dove into getting the tools to help yeah. me and really dove into what is grief? How do I recover from grief? What are the things I need to do? And I started working on me right away. And that is why it's not about how much time you've been grieving. It's about what, like, what have you done? And so right. I was able to progress fairly quickly because I took all the tools available to me plus more. I mean, I was like into this, anything that had to do with grief. I was there. Like Mm -hmm. I'm getting, I'm going to those retreats. I'm doing the things. And so I would say that's a huge thing is plugging into, if you can find anything like local that's about, and this was COVID. So it was hard, but I found one retreat that had to do with grief during COVID. If you can find something to plug into, that's huge. Um, not to be a plug for my own thing, but I love grief recovery. Like what I do, I'm working with so many people right now and watching their lives transformed because they're learning how to recover from grief. I do that online. I do that in person, like find something, anything that's going to educate you about grief and help you to move forward. So those are some of the tools that I did, uh, during the time period and just really started to see the sun again. It was like after a long winter, there was the sun. So those are some of the things I would say for three to six months for me. So let's move on to like sun, sun, sun. Here it comes. Come on. You oh, know, I can't, I, can't I don't know it. that one either. The Beatles. All right. Here comes the sun. Yeah. Here. There you go. Oh, that was just a different part. So, yeah. Okay. So let's go in a bigger chunk. Let's do, well, do you want to do six How about one months? year, one year to current? Okay. But then we kind of mix that. It doesn't matter. Yeah. One I know, year to but it's a, it's a progress or we'll be here thing, all day. You know? Yeah. We'll be here all night. Yeah. Okay. Day, one night. year to current. We're in different can. time zones. That's true. <laughs> it's only 417 yeah, we'll here. Day, like, all night. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, cool. um, well, first I want to say that I think the consistent theme that anybody could pick up on regardless of the tools and et cetera, and the things like you said, it's still what you do with it. So I think the yeah. most valuable earthly thing you can do is shift your mindset. Yeah. Your mindset has to, because if you are successful at anything in life, you have to have the mindset that I can do it. You have to believe yes. that you can get through it. And so you have to tell yourself like, um, I'm going to figure out this grief thing, you know? And and yes. so I think mindset is incredibly powerful because you're going to, if you're pursuing tools, if you're pursuing Facebook pages, grief groups, retreats, books, whatever it is, um, it takes a mindset to decide to do those things. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and to apply the things you learn or whatever. So um Obviously, in my opinion, the most important thing you do is you lean into God. Yeah, you have to. And like you said, you talk to him. And it's not like, you know, in case some people out there like struggle knowing how to pray. I went through a phase like that. I was still a Christian. I didn't really understand how to pray Um, because I always thought it was like our father who are in heaven, you know, Mm -hmm. like that there was this protocol to praying. And, you know, now I'm more like Jesus, bruh. You know, no, not really, but you know, um, you could, could, you know, but like just saying that, like, I I talk to him, like I talk to anybody else, of course, um, with a a significantly different level of respect and humility, but I talk to him, like I talk to anybody else. And so I talk to God about my grief a lot. You know, I talk to God about what I was going through and how I didn't know what to do and how I needed his help. And I can't do this without him. And, um, I feel like he heard my cries and he heard my prayers and, um, so that being said, moving into the time frame that we're talking about, uh, one of the things that was helping me tremendously at that point was this podcast. Mm, that's true. We have yeah. the ability to talk with so many people about yeah. our grief. True. I would encourage all of you guys to start something like this. If, if mm-hmm. you're interested, of course, start reading or excuse me, start writing, start a podcast, like, just 
talk and talk about what you're feeling. And we've, I mean, we're at episode what's, well, technically this 75. is episode 76, but we're, we have an episode we can't air yet. Um, but so whatever, 70 some odd episodes, like we've talked a lot about this stuff <laughs> and it is really helpful. You know? we have so at that. that point, a year to current, one of the first things I was noticing was helping me was talking about it on the podcast and having people telling me that, you know, my faith has helped them and different things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And, and seeing the way that I father my kids has helped them and, and their daily walk. I, I've had a lot of men um, say things to me that I thought no man would ever say to me, you know, your faith is inspirational or awesome. whatever am I, or watching you lets me know that God will help me get through any season of life, things like that. Yeah. So I started feeling encouragement. Um, you know, of course there's still, still grief, um, that comes up and still new things you're learning and new challenges, but gosh, after the year mark for me, it, I, I do not buy into the, um, the second year is harder than the right. first. Nope. Not, not, I don't buy into it. wasn't, it wasn't. For me. Yeah. Or- now I understand for some of our listeners, um, particularly I'm thinking of Dwayne that, you know, he was married to his wife for so much longer right. than we were married. Yeah. And so talk about a, a new life. And so, yeah. um, I understand, but for me, because I can only speak for myself, the second year, uh, was not harder than the first, the first year was sheer misery, but I also started thinking about like, I want to get married again. I want to feel that yeah. connection with somebody again. I want to um, be able to, I missed loving somebody. I missed yeah. showing somebody love and um, doing nice things for somebody. You know, I missed that a lot, yeah. like being really sweet to somebody. And, um, you know, that was, so that was, you know, carrying on. Um, and as the year went by, things got definitely got easier and easier in contrast to the first year at that same. So one year and four months versus four months. Yeah. totally. One year and four months was significantly different. Oh yeah. You know, of course there were still these, these clouds that came over and it was still hard. And I was still dealing with things that nobody knew about. That being said, it was like, I was seeing hope. I was seeing, um, I was believing that my life was going to be different. I was believing my life wasn't over. Um, and then carrying on to the two year mark, um, you know, uh, what would that be? That was, uh, but I think that was about the time we moved here. Uh, I don't know. Sorry. I can't, yeah, I can't do like the it. math. Cause I'm, I'm just like pressured thinking about it right now and it's going further and further away. But, um, I knew that. I think so. That seems right. It, it sounds right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was in February, but I don't know. Anyways. Um, no, it couldn't have been because I, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever. I knew that I needed a new start. That was yeah. something I realized, like I need a new life. Yeah. I, I, I tried repainting my house, you know, Lacey passed away in my house, um, in yeah. my bedroom and, mm-hmm. um, no matter how much I painted and changed things up and redesigned and this and that, there were just memories all over my house that were, yeah. Uh, my life was harder than it needed to be because I was living in that house is yeah. probably the easiest way I can say it. So, um, you know, I, I, again, I don't subscribe to a lot of the things that people talk about for being widowed, like making big decisions in your first year. Although I didn't move in my first year, um, I felt mentally stable enough to make yeah. decisions after, you know, before the first yeah. year. Um, but so, you know, I, I started realizing I needed to move out of my house, moving into current, whatever timeline it happened. Um, I packed up my whole house. I sold my house. I moved to the other side of the country. I didn't know what God had in store for me, but I felt so strongly like I was supposed to do it. And it was scary and it's hard taking a leap of faith like that. Just yeah. being like, I don't know what it looks like, but like, I feel like you're telling me to do it, God, but oh my gosh. Like, and I prayed yeah. so many times, like, Lord, if this is wrong, I'm begging you slam yeah. the door on me. Like, oh gosh, like I'm selling my house Yeah, that I have an affordable mortgage payment on. I love the house yeah. minus the memories and the feelings that I have sometimes in that house, but I loved the house. I loved the area. I had a ton of friends, a lot of support, huge network of people that I could tap into. And God's like, leave it. 
mm. and go across the country to Tennessee. Um, Tennessee. 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 I, I think a lot of people <laughs> probably thought I was crazy. I thought I was a little crazy, but I had a lot of support from a lot of people that mattered to me. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I did it. I stepped out on a limb. And I remember when my real estate agent came over with the photographer and started taking pictures and said, the, the posting will be up tonight. And then all these people were coming to my open house and wow. all these people were talking about how much they loved my house and offers right. started pouring in. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I accepted an offer and packed up, you know, packed my whole house by myself, had some friends come over and help me pack the moving truck. And they came and picked up all of our stuff. And I saw the truck drive away and we got in the car and we left and we said goodbye to California. And now I'm on the other side of the country and I'm like, Lord, what do you have in store for me? Like I yeah. followed. I followed what I believed were your signs that you were showing me time and time again. Why am I here? I can't meet anybody. I don't feel comfortable yet. I loved it. I, I really loved it here, but I didn't feel comfortable um, as far as, you know, it was weird to not know anybody, you know? Yeah, I'm sure. Um, and, uh, but, you know, the Lord does what the Lord does, you know, he, at, at the one of my lowest scariest points of moving here um guess I'm getting all like choked up thinking about it okay. um this amazing woman reached out to me and we started chatting and you know there's a, a lot of promise and hope in my future again because I'm yes. in love with this amazing woman and she's in love with me and yes. she's really good to me and um so I was like aha that's, that's what you did. I see. And then yeah. she encouraged me that I could become a real estate agent and that she thought mm -hmm. I'd be really good at it. And she encouraged me that she thought I could pass high school and that I could get my GED. And, you know, now I am, I moved to Tennessee. I'm now a high school. Gra I've been, I've been here a little over a year. I'm now a high school graduate. That's I have awesome. never been able to say that in the rest of my life, you know, but it's mm -hmm. been, I missed that opportunity 25 years ago. To be a high school graduate. I'm now a high school graduate. I just completed my real estate course. I'm about so to take cool. the test. Um, I'm in love with an amazing woman. Mm -hmm. And uh I'm just like, okay, Lord, like I'm so glad I listened. So, anyways, that's but you know, that's you were awesome. asking me to cover a, a long time a lot, frame, yeah. So it took a while, but uh and continuously with the tools that helped were um God, mindset, and obviously falling in love again was a tremendous tool, having somebody to talk about it that yeah. understood me and stuff. So let's hear your, uh, well, I have a question for you first. Yeah. I have, when you're talking and listeners might have too, how did you know that God was leading you to Tennessee? Like, what do you mm. mean by that? Okay. Wow. There were a lot of them. So, uh, I, as it was signs, I kept seeing okay. signs repeatedly. And as I prayed for signs, they came like instantly, Wow. um, amazing. a couple times. And like, so uh, I'll just give a few examples. There were many more, but, um, these are the ones that were most powerful to me. So the ones I use most often, uh, I was selling, um, Lacey's as I was packing my house and stuff, I was still really scared, but I was selling this, uh, KitchenAid mixer. Now I didn't know I was moving yet, but I was starting to pack. That's how I roll. You know, yeah. I knew I, I knew I was wanting to move, but didn't know where yet. So I was packing. Um, but I sold this KitchenAid mixer, you know, one of those yeah. you know, mm -hmm. things that I didn't know how to use. So yeah. Like, so I, I sold it, it and I met this really nice couple that came to my house, a uh, little bit older. And um, she said, Are you sure like your wife isn't gonna care that you sold oh. this to me? Because I gave oh. her a really good deal on it. And I was like, she's in heaven. I don't think she's going to mind. And oh. they were like, oh my gosh. I'm so, and they had already seen my kids come running out to like say hi yeah. to them. You know? And then uh, the the woman says, can we pray for you? Oh, sweet. And I was like, I would love it. She's like, I don't know if you're a believer, but like, can we pray for you? I was like, I would love that. And I just thought they meant, can we pray for you? Yeah. They laid hands on me right nice. then and prayed for me out front of my house. And That's awesome. at the end of the prayer, the guy, I did not mention anything about moving to them or anything. Um, the guy, after, you know, we finished praying, the guy just kind of had this look on his face and he's like, um, I feel kind of weird saying this, but I really felt God pressing it upon my heart that I'm supposed to tell you 
sorry. Um, that there's there's something really big that you're thinking about doing and he wants wow. you to do it. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, okay. I was That's like, so I'm cool. thinking about selling my house and moving across the country. And he's like, I think you're supposed to. Complete wow, stranger, so cool. right? Um, another one was I was really scared and um, I took my kids out to dinner and uh, we were waiting for a table. We were sitting outside the restaurant and uh, I was, I just went to prayer real quick and I said, Lord, like, I'm terrified. Like, can you send me another sign? I know you sent me so many. Can you send me another sign? Literally right then the door opens up to the restaurant and this husband and wife walk out and the woman has the Tennessee flag no way. on her sweatshirt. That's so cool. And I was like, Hey, I was like, isn't that the Tennessee sweat? Isn't that the Tennessee flag? And she's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, I'm just, I'm thinking about moving there. And they were like, you're going to love it. Like, it's awesome. Do it, wow. do it, do it. Oh my know? gosh. That's awesome. And I was like, wow. And I chatted with them for like five minutes. They took off and they said, well, well, maybe we'll see you there someday. And, um, and then probably one of the most powerful signs to me was, um, I had my cousins also moved here. Mm -hmm. um, we moved here together from California, a slightly different time frame, but we moved here together. But we had talked a couple months prior to the event I'm about to mention. Um, and we talked about, hey, what would you guys think about moving out of state? And we were all just kind of talking about it. And I was, they were like, well, where would we move? And we're like, I don't know. What do you think about Idaho? What do you think about Texas? What do you think about Arizona? What do you think about Tennessee? What do you think about whatever, you know? And then we all kind of were thinking Idaho. Um, we were leaning towards Idaho. And then, yeah. uh, you know, we just kind of, you know, okay, yeah, maybe someday. Well, like two months after that, um, I started looking at Maryville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And I said, excuse me, Merville. I got to say that the locals. Like the local. um, at that time, though, to me, it was Maryville, Tennessee. Right. And so uh, I texted my cousin, hadn't talked to him in a while. And I said, hey, man, I know we talked about moving out of state. I'm really considering it. I'm thinking about moving to Tennessee. And I said, can you pray for me? And he said, yeah, of course, we'll pray for you. Um, where are you thinking about moving in Tennessee? And I was like, oh, there's this little city called Maryville. And he's like, dude, that's so crazy. Um, his wife's name is Michelle. He said, Shell and I were looking at houses in Maryville, Tennessee last night. That's insane. Like we never talked about Tennessee. Yeah. I mean, well, we talked about Tennessee, but we never talked about middle eastern western we never i mean the whole state of tennessee was right always, uh, that's awesome we were looking at the same city randomly so um anyways so the, i know it's so a long cool. version but i oh, could seriously good. go on and on and on uh I'll, I'll say one more there's a quick one uh i again i was afraid like like most of the times i went to prayer asking god for signs and I woke up and I was having my coffee and I said, Lord, like, gosh, I'm so scared. Like, can you, can you send, I'm sorry, but can you send me another sign? This was the last sign I got. Um, I opened up Facebook. The first ad I saw was a news, uh, some news article. And it said Smith and Wesson is moving from California to Maryville, Tennessee. Whoa. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, That's so, cool. so for me, I felt like it was clear as day. Like, yeah. because every time I asked for a sign, he gave me one like right after. That's so And cool. uh, so it was like, I don't know. It's just one of those things that maybe to somebody else, these sounds like a series of like, well, yeah, I could see how that happened. No. To me in that moment, praying for those things, it was yeah. like God was speaking to me. Yeah. And here I am, you know? Wow. And so anyways, I know that was a long, uh, thrown out but you know people want to know how god works and yeah no, that's how that's he works cool. you know yeah so anyways so for you okay so um, one so year just, to current yeah and current is one week from three years um a week from tuesday may may 23rd will be three years so that's crazy um so ooh, there's so much change in a year to three years yeah um you know during that time it was a little before a year for me, you know, start the kind of start the dating process here and there and saw what I didn't want. You know, we, we could talk about some of those dates on past episodes, hot mom shirt guy, and, you know, just experienced a little bit. And then I met Joel. So we started mm. officially talking and I think it was 18 months out from after Luke passed away. we started talking before, you know, we were connected through Facebook and all of that. Um, and so that was definitely a big thing, like being open to dating again. 
um, and feeling super blessed to find Joel <laughs> or have us God connect us um, because it's not much fun as you found out doing the dating apps. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, super, super. I did thankful. find out on the perfect spooning side. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Some tall man. So yeah. <laughs> um, Oh, Anyways, I, I, so that was a big thing in that time period. Um, just feeling alive again, like I started to feel before, um, I moved at 11 months, I think let's see April. May. Yeah. We moved at 11 months after Luke passed away to a new house. Um, that was huge. Um, I also had to do a job I didn't like for a while in order to get my loan. And oh, yeah. remember that I was a parent yep. educator and that was very humbling because I had my master's in teaching and um, paraeducators, you don't have to, you just had to be 18. Very important job because it's very hard. Stuff. Right. Yeah. But it was very humbling. And I was like, okay, God, whatever I got to do. And I did it for three months. And um, it also showed me like, kind of like, this isn't the direction I want my life to be. During that time period, we started our podcast. Like that's when you and I were like, okay, we need to show people Jesus. Like they're turning to all the wrong things. Let's start a podcast. Um, yeah, we started our podcast as baby widows. We were not even a year into our journey. Um, yeah, I was, I was I eight was, months. I was we almost 11, a year. Yeah. Yeah. May 4th. So really close to a year, but we were still babies in the journey. I was doing a lot of like widow ministry during that time period. Joel also said, why don't you start a nonprofit? So I started doing that, um, which, you know, I talked about that widow's tea. I just did last weekend, the mother's day before I brought gifts to, um, seven different widows in the area. Um, just started to really like, what is my purpose in life? Like if I had to go through this, I don't want it to be just to, for nothing. Like um, the verse for um, the nonprofit is John 10, 10. We were made to live life and live life abundantly. And so we went through this, not so we could just sit here and survive until we go to heaven and see our spouses. Like we have more to do here. Mm. And so really just trying to figure out what's my purpose? Um, I did go back to teaching a little bit this year for four months, definitely confirmed that's not my purpose. Um, and that's where I started getting into grief work because I know this is what I want to do. Like, this is my passion. This is my heart. So if I can make a living out of helping people, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Um, there's so much that happened between one and three years. Like my entire life changed. I got married, <laughs> which is a whole other thing. Um, I had a son graduate, which brings more grief. And like, I remember crying and crying, going to take him to college without Luke this last August, how hard that was. Um, so many things, but it's like, you learn, I've said this before, you know, it's like, which, so Luke had a prosthetic limb. So this is very easy for me to relate to, but like, it's like having, when you lose someone, it's like you've had an amputation, like you will always miss that part of you that's gone, but you learn to live with it. So mm. I've learned to live with Luke being gone. Um, but I said, see the biggest things that have helped me in the last two years, um, turning to God always, um, and plugging into other people. Like I'm a very big community person. Um, I have two of my best friends who are in my wedding, Jess and Stacy are both widows. Um, we get together and do walks and we go line dancing and like finding people who get it. That was big, big, big for me still is. Um, and just trying to capture every moment. Like Joel's always like, I love your perspective on life. Like you like love every moment. I'm like, yeah, it's because I, I know how easily you can lose somebody. Yes. And so like really savoring every moment with my kids with Joel, with my family, like just trying to really take in the moment and be present and really living life to the fullest. Um, I went through that time period around a year. I remember when I was like, if it's legal, ethical, and moral or something like that, I'm going to say yes to everything. That's when I did. That was when you were jumping, jumping off cliffs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did that a couple of different times that summer. And I just said yes to everything. You got a paddle board, right? I got a paddle board around that time, started paddle boarding, you know, started line dancing, like just really like diving into what what do I like to do? What brings me joy? And I'm still in a discovery process. Like right now I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do with my nonprofit. Exactly. Like, what do I love? What do I not love? What am I good at? What am I talented at? And just honing into what is the purpose of life and what does God have me here for? You know, and mm. then le I'm learning a new marriage, which is a whole process. Cause I was married to Luke for 17 years. Now I've been married for eight weeks to Joel. And, and how many not, days? Um, Two, one, 
57, <laughs> 57 days, something like that. <laughs> and so it's a whole different process being married to someone else. And, um, but I feel like I'm like, you know, three years in, like I'm, I'm good. Like, of course there's still grief, but it is not that debilitating grief. Right. And it's not that like the way that it used to be. And I've done a lot of grief work. And so I want you to know if you're new in this, it will get better, but you have to take steps yourself. You have yes. to decide that you're going to get better. You've got to take steps and learn about grief and how to heal and, and lean into God and lean into community and um, just know that you don't have to stay there forever. Mm -hmm. Like it's you forever. Where you think it's forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> So I don't even know. That's a lot. Like there's so much in year one to three. Like I can't even explain it. Year one, you know, the one year anniversary, um, we wrote messages to Luke and let the balloons go, which all these people got mad at me. Like it's going to ruin the ozone layer or whatever. It's going to pollute, but you know what, whatever. It's what we needed to do. Yeah. Um, year two, we just went to dinner. And I think this year I'm actually teaching a grief recovery class on that night. Um, but I think I'll go do that. And then I'll take the kids out to dinner. And I already talked to Joel about it. He's like, yeah, just you and your kids go do that. Like that day is like our special day. I'll go to the grave. I'm sure on that day. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just learning to be content in who I am and who God made me to be and what the purpose is. And yeah, there are days when I, I, you know, even yesterday, there's a little bit of grief that Luke's not here to celebrate this with me, but even more, it will be for father's day for me coming up. Like it's going to be like awkward because Joel's here, but that's not my kid's dad, but I still want to celebrate him. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's just a whole new world, but, um, I don't know. I would say pray, get to pray just to make it today. Hey, you hey. got to pray. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real leaning into Jesus, that's it. If I just sum yeah. it, all, sum it yeah. all up, that's what it is. Um, but finding who you are, finding the people don't give up don't and give remember up. that nobody you're gonna you're gonna experience um people's opinion oh yeah you're going to and try to know that your intentions are good your heart is good and try not to let anybody interfere with your happiness because they're not the ones that have to live your life for you Yep. And like, there's nothing wrong with you. And I, I'm, I'm mostly saying this because a lot of stories I've heard and things like that. Um, don't let anybody else determine your future and Boom. what you should and shouldn't do. Yeah. Um, follow your heart and there's nothing wrong with you trying to be happy again. Don't let anybody's expectation of you being miserable for the rest of your life have any impact on you finding happiness again. Because like Michelle said, you're still here for a reason. Yep. We're still here to serve the kingdom of God. And um, God loves us. And what is that? Uh, you know, the Bible verse that's when it talks about um, how it is when we want to. It's like when when your kid asks for something, do you give them? Uh, I don't remember the exact. Um, I'll, I'll just make it up because I don't remember okay. the exact. It was like. Something like if your kid asks for flowers, do you give him a snake? Right. And it's like, if you as evil sinners know mm -hmm. how to give gifts to your children, right. how imagine much how much better the father knows how to give mm -hmm. gifts to you. Something to that effect. It's in the book of Matthew, I believe. Um, Tina and I are reading that. And I believe that was something. Is we it just something about across. if God cares for us, even for a sparrow, how much more does he care it, for you? Is it a different one? It, I think it's after that. Oh, okay. I think it's that same section, but it's, it's after that. But the point remains that it's saying like, God knows what you need and yeah. uh, count on him to deliver to you and just find, find your happiness again, that you're going to feel grief. You're going to feel loss. You're yeah. going to miss them for the rest of your life. Right. You're, you're going to wish it was different for the rest of your life. Like there's going to be a part of you that's always going to wish that things were different, but you also have to come to a place of knowing, well, it's not, it's not different. You know, this is what it is. And so what am I going to do with it moving forward? Because otherwise you're choosing to live in the past. Yeah. You need to live in the present and beyond and um, try to source 
something that brings you, or, you know, try to find something that sources happiness for you, brings you joy, um, would be my markism for the day. Boom. Boom. I would drop my mic, but it's on a stand. So, right. We can knock it over. Yeah. Anyways, that was (laughs) good stuff. Just take the microphone. Good stuff. Sorry. Um, Beastie Boys, you got to fight for your right to party. To party. That's the advice for today. You got to fight for your right to party. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yep well uh, um yeah i think like that to, about covers it I think right? it does would you like to wrap it on up in prayer wrap it up all right all right bruh <laughs> just kidding <laughs> sorry oh lord thank you thank you so much that you are a god that is just so understanding and mm-hmm. faithful and loving and kind and generous and all things good um I pray, Lord, that people can see the journey that we've been on and will allow it to bring them hope if they are on the beginning stages or in the middle or current with where we're at or beyond, that you would um, help us to bring people hope, help us to um, deliver the message of your kingdom in a positive and loving way. And um, I just pray for all of those listening, Lord, that you would come into their lives, listen to them as they speak to you, that you would um, just make yourself ever present and known. And that if somebody like me um, is thinking about doing something, is afraid, or or you want to direct their path in a certain way, I pray for signs for them, Lord. And I pray that their eyes would be able to see um, and their ears would be able to hear the signs that you're pointing them towards. And don't allow fear to um, rule over their hearts. Give us... Um, you know, spirit of courage, Lord. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you liked this podcast, give it a little bang. Bang, bang. That was a good one. I know. On Apple I know. Podcasts. <laughs> I know, right? I am good. <laughs> Anyways, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen. You know what's so fun? I haven't even told you this story. I was at a bridal shower for my friend Patty, who's also a widow, who's getting married again. I'm so excited for her. Um, And some people were asking, somehow it came up about our podcast. Okay. Patty's like, what? Tell them the name of your podcast. And they're like, where can we find this podcast? I'm like, it's on all platforms. And they get out their phone, a couple of them, and they pull it up and they're like, we're going to listen to this. They weren't even widows. And did you tell them to give us a little bing five stars? Yeah, that would have been my first like plug. Let me give a little bing five stars. No, I didn't. But it was, it's just fun when people pull it up and then it's like right there and they're like, this is you, you know, like, yeah, Yeah, yeah. it is, you know, and just, um, I don't know where I was going with that, but if you liked it, give a little bing five stars. It's just fun when people listen to it and it's just, you know, all over the world and all the places and it's fun. It's fun. It's crazy. Our voice is heard in all kinds of countries. And yeah, I do people. believe there's gonna be <laughs> there's gonna be more that happens with this. Like like we've talked about retreats and things. Like I believe it's gonna happen. It's just a matter of time before um, all these things happen. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> just kind of random word, but word. Okay, well, thank you guys for listening, and uh, we'll see you again. No, you know what I forgot to say. If you want to no, email us? Oh yeah, too soon. M at gmail Facebook Messenger, Widow Too Soon, Instagram, all the places. Yes. Forgot to say that. So so you can find us there. Good job. And uh, we'll talk to you. At Widow Messages, come through Widow Too Soon. Doc, yes. What is it? Widow Too Soon at Facebook? Yes. I don't know. Just look up Widow Too Soon with a number two. You'll oh, find yeah, us. yeah. There you go. You'll find okay. us. All right. Yeah. Talk to you guys next time. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.